the final DLC for City Skylines has been dropped, which means you need, nay, deserve the definitive City Skylines DLC and content creator pack tier list. I'm sure my personal preferences will bleed through just slightly, but I assure you, I'm going to do everything I can to cater this list towards the wide world of DLC enjoyers. If you're wondering which City Skylines DLC to spend your money on before City Skylines 2 drops, here you are. Let me just scooch back into this corner and here we go. Where else to begin than what started it all, the City Skylines base game. Now, I know it's just the base game, but you cannot deny the importance of City Skylines. Overcoming all of the failures that SimCity and other games had leading up to it, listening to what the city building community wanted in general, and just paving the way for everything else that came afterwards. Say what you will, I'm putting City Skylines base game in S tier. Now from here, to generate some suspense, we're gonna go with the content creator packs first and then we'll get into the more main DLCs. So in order of release date, the next one to rate is the pre-order pack released on the 10th of March, 2015. I feel this pre-order pack is worth it for the dog park alone. The basketball park is cool too, but pre-ordering, you know, we're supposed to remember that pre-ordering is bad. I'm gonna put this in B. You can't really make a decision based on it anyways, cause you know, like it was pre-ordered, so. I'm foreseeing a rocky start here, but please do stick with me. Next up is the Art Deco Content Creator Pack released on the 1st of September, 2016. I'm putting it in D. My reasoning is I don't love the buildings that are in it. I don't think they're visually pleasing to me and maybe that's just current standards. And I also don't like that you can't choose when they grow in. They don't have like a district style with them. I know the reasonings behind it. I know that it's older, but I think if you don't currently have Art Deco and you're looking to potentially spend money on DLCs, this is not where your money should go. Speaking of the D tier, stadiums is going there <laughs> because it's not available anymore and it only offered real world sports stadiums. I'm not a fan of real world stuff. You can't get it anymore anyways. And gatekeeping is weird. Why was it time limited? I don't actually know. Eh. Moving on to some better things. The High Tech Buildings Content Creator Pack was released 29th of November, 2016. And it has some of my favorite assets. It has the vertical farm. It has the space shuttle Duber. It has the biodome, the crypto servitory. I think you can have a lot of fun putting these assets into some cities. And I think that for the price associated, it's actually going into the A tier for me. Pearls of the East pack was released on 22nd of March, 2017. And the buildings in it are beautiful, but they're very few. So if I were spending my own money kind of thing, I don't think this would be at the top of my list to purchase, but it would probably be on the list to purchase. So I'm putting it into the B tier. Now, as we get into the content creator packs that introduce new housing, like new residential styles into your cities. Know that for many of them, I am tempted actually to put them up to the S tier, like the next one coming out European suburbia. My problem with that is that one of the reasons that I love these so much is bringing a variety to our housing. And so if I were to put European suburbia into S tier, then I would also have to put the university city into S tier and then also mid-century modern. You see where I'm going with this? So stick with me through this. You would want to pick and choose your own favorites of these styles, but European Suburbia released on the 19th of October, 2017 is going in A tier. Of course, having the European style housing is rad. I use it often when I'm trying to get like an East Coast Canada vibe. Just love these buildings, really well done. On a similar note, the University City Content Creator Pack released on the 21st of May, 2019. I also really love, and you know what? I think when we're talking vanilla stuff, these housing assets were the first ones that I saw that reminded me of buildings that are actually like around where I live. I love these. I'm happy that they grow in like every city that I make. So also A tier, well worth paying for. Next up is the Modern City Center Content Creator Pack released on the 7th of November, 2019. And my kind of general feeling about this one is meh. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I often forget that these buildings exist, like very often. And I think that that's pretty telling. Um, I don't think I would be remiss if these never showed up in my city. So this is going 
to be our first C tier content creator pack. The Modern Japan content creator pack was released on the 26th of March, 2020. And you know, I'm gonna be honest, I do also often forget that it exists. However, the difference is that when I do remember it exists, I'm excited to use these buildings. They're just visually lovely. So because of that difference, this is going into the B tier. The Bridges and Tears content creator pack was released on the 21st of May, 2021. I love the bridges that came in this pack. I do wish that there were more, perhaps two options for the American two lane street and two options for the European two lane street. I'm saying street, I mean bridge. I always forget that the, what is it? Like two piers exist and the keys are actually quite beautiful, but they threw in like a million keys, not exaggerating at all. And I wish that they had put that effort into the bridges. Nevertheless, they are beautiful. I don't dislike this pack at all. It is going into the B tier for me. Also released on the 21st of May, 2021 was the train stations content creator pack. <sighs> Boy. <laughs> boy, oh boy, the number of stations that we got with this pack, just the, the sheer number of them alone was unforeseen, amazing, love that. And then to have each one be so beautiful, the Metro Plaza station alone puts this into an S tier, but also the rest of them do. So this is my first S tier content creator pack. If like, just get it, just get it. It's, it's so worth having the variety in your transit stations. So good. Speaking of variety, who doesn't love a little variety in their maps? Keeping in mind our vanilla players, right? So vanilla PC and or console players, the map pack one, first one was released on the 25th of January, 2022. And I think this map pack offers so much to our vanilla players. I think by 2022, we had all potentially been a little bit exhausted by the maps that were already available. And to have a content creator pack made that was solely focused on maps, so there wasn't distractions with buildings and that kind of thing. A genius move by Colossal Order, love to see it. And all of the maps in this pack are stunning, like genuinely beautiful. I want to build cit cities on every single one of them. The interchanges were awesome. The variety in the pack is awesome. It's an S tier for me. Released the same day, the 25th of January, 2022 was the Vehicles of the World pack. Phenomenal. I love every vehicle that is in this pack. They take us away from a lot of the cartoony feel that is the original vehicles that come with the game. The service buildings are awesome offered like more than one vehicle option per service building. They could have just given us like one new police car, one new fire truck, but they didn't. They give us a choice. And again, what a cool concept in a video game where you could just be releasing building packs and building packs or, you know, tree packs to think of releasing something that is moving within the city that like breathes life into your city. Great job. This is an A tier content creator pack. Mid century modern content creator pack. <laughs> was released on the 14th of September, 2022. And these buildings are gorgeous. They're lovely. They've got the little pools in them. They've got like the good neighbor fences. I love these houses. I love variety in low density residential. This is easily going into the A tier. Released alongside it on the same day, the 14th of September, 2022 was the Seaside Resorts Content Creator Pack. This pack, I think, is like a sleeper. People need to pay more attention to this one. The number of buildings we were given with it is incredible. They're all beautiful. And the historic services that come with the pack are so good for like small town feel, which I personally am really in love with. I was tempted to put this content creator pack into the S tier. And the only reason I'm not is that you could argue it's fairly niche use case. So you're either they're making a small town vibe or you're doing something by the seaside. But I encourage you to try to find a place for these buildings in your city. It is going into the A tier. Next up is Heart of Korea, released on the 15th of November, 2022. These buildings are beautiful, but I find that they're even more niche use case a lot of the time. Even the garbage building in it, for example, it's wonderful because it doesn't produce any pollution, but it's giant. Like it's so tall. I really struggle
struggle to find a place for it to look like it fits in in my cities. With the buildings being so lovely, I do want to have access to them. I'm just not gonna make them a really high priority. So this is going to go into the B tier. The Skyscrapers Content Creator Pack was released also on the 15th of November, 2022. And the buildings themselves are pretty rad, but I agree with a lot of the fandom with the kind of frustration, I guess, that they are all unique buildings. If you're wanting to have maybe like more than one skyline that involves these really tall buildings, you're kind of euchred a bit along those lines some of them are also like the scale is nuts compared to the growable buildings that we could kind of intersperse about them. So it's a really great concept. I think they could have implemented it better. I wouldn't prioritize it so high. So it's going into C tier. Map pack two. <laughs> Following in the footsteps of the first map pack, I think was a big challenge. We also have lots of other maps at this point released with the like full scale DLCs that are more modern, like made more recently kind of things. I struggle to look at many of the maps in this pack and want to build on them. And then I also see the interchanges on them um, that bring you into the city. Like, you know, the first ones that you get with your opening tile and I kind of go, for me, the one map, the Fertile Desert map that we're actually building a 100% vanilla city on right now on this channel during live streams really saves this pack for me, but not really, not many of the other maps do. Can you tell that I'm struggling and I'm feeling uncomfortable? I'm putting this into the C tier. Africa in Miniature was released on the 22nd of March, 2023, and kind of similar to the Heart of Korea vibes. The buildings are stunning, very niche use case. I love having the more variety in services. They gave us a new library, which is fantastic. So very niche use case stuff, but too beautiful to ignore. So I think this one's going to go into a B tier for me. The second of three content creator packs released on that day was the shopping malls DLC. And I can't ignore how much these buildings remind me of the world around me. I'm in Canada, Western world, shopping malls exist here. The unique buildings that are the, the shopping malls are great. And the commercial buildings in it are great. Really like solid work. This is like one of those packs that you know is probably gonna be fantastic and was fantastic. It's great. It's going into the A tier. Speaking of packs that you know was going to be fantastic, also released on the same day as the last two was sports venues. And gang, listen, I'm not a sports guy, but these venues that are in this pack are plentiful for one and just drop dead gorgeous for another. I want to put them all down in my city and make like landmarks of them. They're stunning. Not only that, but the parks that came with this, it brings us just like regular parks that are sports related as well. They're beautiful. They're global. They have the pathing around them. There was obviously thought put into them and we get a metro station that matches the sports venues. And like, can I just repeat, can you look at them? <laughs> to prevent myself from rambling on, but also to try to ramble on so you can see more of it down here. I'm gonna just tell you that this is worth every single penny and it's going way up here into the S tier. Getting into the final batch of DLCs, CCPs being released, Brooklyn and Queens released on the 23rd of May, 2023. These buildings are great. And I think that they really resonate with their inspiration. However, I can see them feeling a little repetitive. I just think that you would use these for one area in your city and then you'd go, oh, cool, looks like Brooklyn, New York, but then you'd wanna do other stuff other places. I don't know, I just think that these look great and if you very specifically want that American high density vibe, they're gonna work really well for you. I just don't think that these would be something that I would prioritize. Super high spending my money on, but they're lovely. So they're going into the B tier. Fair? 
Also from the recent batch, Industrial Evolution. What a cool pack. Our generic industry has never had any love, if I'm just kind of going through it all in my mind. No. So if the Industries DLC did not exist, I would likely be putting this up into an S tier just to have some sort of love and variety given to our industry. They're really great looking buildings. If you wanted, you could mismatch them with the like regular, I guess, generic industry to have even more variety. These are phenomenal. I'm so excited to be introducing these into our Vanilla City ASAP. They are going into the A tier for me. And the last of the content creator packs is the Railroads of Japan, also released 23rd of May this year. The new stations in it are lovely, but I feel like we do already have quite a few of them by now. And I don't think you're gonna end up using like all of them in one city, right? Having the service variety is nice. I, I think we're just in another one of those places where this is fairly niche use case. Really wonderful looking buildings, just not like a super high priority. So I'm putting them middle of the road into B tier. Okay, gang, checking in with you. Now that we're done, the content creator packs, what do you think? Am I way off here? Do you trust me going into the main DLCs? I hope so. Let's start with the City Skylines Deluxe Edition Upgrade Pack, whatever it was called, available on opening day, the 10th of March, 2015. Are you ready? I was tempted to put this into the D tier because all it gives you is these real world buildings, which I think in a game like City Skylines, at least City Skylines 1 shouldn't be a priority. This game was created to be fairly, car not you know, cartoony looking, right? It doesn't look perfectly like the real world. It's neat. You know, I'll put down the Arc de Triomphe maybe once and then maybe delete it and then probably just never put it down again, right? But you know what saved it from the D tier is the art book that came with it. If you own this and you haven't looked through the art book, I encourage you to. It's lovely. So. For me, Deluxe Edition going into C tier. Then the After Dark DLC came out on the 24th of September, 2015, and it's a classic. There's a reason that After Dark is included in at least the Switch version. And is it also included on PlayStation and Xbox? Let me know. But you know, there's a reason that when people think of City Skylines, they just already think of all of the things that are in After Dark, like the bike lanes and the two commercial types, the tourism and leisure. Leisure, leisure, leisure. I just couldn't imagine playing City Skylines without After Dark. So it is absolutely an A tier DLC. Getting into the thick of it with Snowfall that was released on the 18th of February, 2016. How apropos. Now, I think that this DLC is actually quite underrated. I think people really kind of give the stink to Snowfall and I don't think it deserves that so much. I was tempted to put this into A tier, but I'm, I will tell you why it's not going there. First, I do want to say that Snowfall maps are fun. I will probably play maybe three to four regular maps and then I'll get a huge itch to play Snowfall map. Maybe that's because I'm Canadian. And of course, who doesn't love trams? especially with all of the updates that have come to Tramps. For me, what's holding this back from being an A tier DLC is that it should have been seasons, I think. If you could choose at the start of your game, whether you're gonna do spring, summer, fall, winter, I don't even need them to change within the game. Just, you know, choose spring, summer, fall, winter. This would have been A, maybe even S tier. But because it is specific to snow, that is kind of sort of niche. It's going into B tier, but I want to say, that I love it a lot. Match Day, released on the 9th of June, 2016, and it's a free DLC, go and grab it. It was the foundation for the later sports venues that came out. And you know, it's cool, you put down sports stations. I certainly don't have anything against this DLC. It's free, I just, it doesn't like totally thrill me. Maybe because I'm spoiled by the actual sports venues in the sports venue CCP, but then you couldn't have them without this. But anyways, it's going into B because I felt weird putting it into A. It's great, it's free, go get it. Now on to my nickname from high school, Natural Disasters. <laughs> Released on the 29th of November, 2016. I think this DLC is fun, like once. And then you're like, man, I just wanna build a really nice city. If it gave us more stuff outside of what we would use in a disaster scenario, it would be a lot better. But I think unless you are a creator trying to like make cool things happen for fun, for the camera or whatever, I think you're gonna use this stuff maybe once. 
The scenarios in it can be challenging, which is which is good. So it definitely doesn't deserve a D, but it is going into the C tier. Mass Transit was released on the 18th of May, 2017, and it has the OG traffic fix scenario. It spawned that whole genre. It also gives us road options. It gives us hubs, transit hubs, and the foundation for so many more transit related things. It's one of those DLCs like After Dark that I can't imagine playing playing City Skylines without, this is easily an A tier DLC. I wanted to cut to me like singing poorly here, but I'm not gonna do that to your ears. The Concerts DLC was released on the 17th of August, 2017, and it's a great little pack. Because it's so small, I did actually consider dropping it into the C tier, but I think the price is smaller to match that. And despite it being so small, I do genuinely find myself putting down the festival area in like every city that I do. I think it's fun to zoom in on your Sims and watch them having a concert. It's a great pack. It's going into B. What is there not to say about the Green Cities DLC released 19th October 2017? This pack has the most stunning high density residential buildings in the game. The low density residential is fantastic too. The unique buildings that come with it are all beautiful. The concept is great. Save the world, please. I can't think of a single negative thing to say about this pack. I love this pack. I think it's pretty well known. If you know me, this is like, this is my favorite pack. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna commit to that. Green Cities is my favorite DLC, but putting aside my own needs, I think this DLC is great for everyone. It has scenarios, it has beautiful buildings, it has beautiful buildings, just it's going into the S tier. There's so much more to say about it. Get the Green Cities DLC. Getting into a roll here, the Park Life DLC was released the 24th of May, 2018, and it is also lovely. I especially appreciate that Park Life gives us props that the vanilla players can detail with or decorate with. Having four different park types is an awesome variety because we get so many buildings within those park types. Was this the first DLC to introduce the growing star rating system? I think it may have been, right? Which is, you know, fun. <laughs> and who doesn't love a good scam park? Again, nothing bad to say about the Park Life DLC. It's absolutely worth an S tier rating. Industries was released 23rd of October, 2018. And I would say as far as as bringing any sort of challenge into the game with game mechanics, Industries does that the most. It has the production chain, which you need to balance. It can introduce extraordinary amounts of traffic if you don't figure out how to get your industry trucks out of the city or ship your goods through ships or trains. It just has the most potential to actually be difficult. Add to that that the buildings are lovely looking, laying out swaths of farmland or Tree plantations is great. Once again, nothing bad to be said here. This is 100% right up here in S tier. Let me educate you on the Campus DLC. Released on the 21st of May, 2019. I love this DLC so, so much personally. I really love how big the buildings are. They help you fill up a map if you are trying to kind of get something in every place. You can have a university all condensed together or you can spread it out throughout your city. There's different styles of universities sitting down and making these judgments. I actually wanted to put this DLC into the S tier. The only reason I won't is because the star rating system, you have to maintain the stats in order for you to like stay at five stars and there's no other DLC that works that way. So because of that inconsistency and kind of the frustration that can bring, I'm putting this into A tier. It's still phenomenal. Just my friends, we only have five DLCs left. Let's move on to Sunset Harbor, which fun fact is around the time that I started playing the game being released on the 26th of March, 2020. The water treatment plants that come with it, like the inland ones are pretty cool. The fishing is pretty cool. If I'm being realistic with you and I'm trying very much to do that, it's kind of forgettable. I had to think about what was included in this. The only one that I remember is fishing and fishing's like, yeah, okay, that should have been in industries probably. There's helicopters, but like, so I'm putting this into a C tier right beside natural disasters. 
Next up is the Airports DLC, released 25th of January 2022. And I love airplanes and stuff and airlines and travel. And so I was really excited for this DLC. And I do enjoy building airports with this DLC in my city. But I find kind of like once I get the airport built, that's sort of it, right? And there's only a three star rating system. There's really not any challenge to getting those three stars. There were no like scenarios introduced with it and there's no further like integration into the city once you've plunked down your airport or airports. It's cool, especially if you're like a flight enthusiast, probably even more cool, but I just, I wouldn't prioritize getting it as much as I would prior prioritize like mass transit or campus. So it's going into the B tier. It's, it's great. It's just, it's middle of the road. Palazas and pomegranates was released on the 14th of September, 20. 2022. Gorgeous. <laughs> Just gorgeous. The buildings that come in the pack are stunning. The props and the plazas that come in the pack are even also stunning. And you can use them to decorate and detail your city, similar to how you can use the park life props. You get what people have been asking for forever with walkable cities. The roads that you use to get those walkable areas are lovely. I think the fact that having a plazas and pomegranates area costs a lot of money is a good thing. But even if you don't think that's a good thing and you don't want to have like the money cost with it, you can just set a district to be the buildings and still have it be like a drivable area. And then you still get these beautiful wall to wall buildings with all the color variations that come with them. This is absolutely an S tier pack. Speaking of money, you know how to make money? Stocks. Um, the Financial Districts DLC came out on the 13th of December, 2022. And the office buildings that come in this pack are visually lovely. I think they're really, really nice looking. Love having more variety in my growables as always. But the stocks themselves are really cheesable. I find if I'm gonna go into the stock market and actually try to make some money, like I'm just gonna cheese it. And the stock market itself like it, it, it's building that grows is kind of heinous looking. I find that I never want to level it up all the way because it's so wild. So it's not a bad pack by any means, but again, I just can't justify putting it beside After Dark Mass Transit Campus. So it is going into B tier. And we come to our final pack, the Hotels and Retreats DLC mini expansion released on the 23rd of May, 2023. I was genuinely surprised at how much I kind of fell in love with this little mini expansion. The hotels themselves are of course beautiful, but I also like fell in love with how it introduces new tourism types and how you have to like actually think about the zoning around a hotel or the nature around the hotel or the noise or whatever, if you want that hotel to succeed. That actually makes like city planning have to happen. And then on top of that, you get all of these new parks that come with it. And so many of the parks have variations, which is genius. I just really love this DLC and I really think it's worth getting these buildings into your city. So this is going into A tier. What do you think? My two questions are, do you agree with my S tier? And do you agree with my D tier? And I guess everything else in between. I do really stand by this order here. I've tried to be fair, but also put my kind of fangirling often of the game aside, but I am also a human being right? And we all value different things. I have left a link to this template in the description below. Feel free to put them in your own order and then come and hop into our discord link also in the description below and let me know what your list looks like. If you strongly agree with me or have felt any emotion, maybe in disagreement in any way, give the video a thumbs up because I made you feel something. And if you want to see this kind of stuff for City Skylines 2, be sure to subscribe to the channel and gang, I'll catch you next time.